Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem. This is our Foundry VTT series where we've been working on Stormwreck Isle. I'm going to do something slightly different in this video because Stormwreck Isle is pretty much done, ready to go. I did fix one little issue. Um, you will have noticed in the last video that when we were on the Compass Rose, it was actually really quite loud, that C background. And even though I adjusted the sound, it didn't make a lot of difference. Found out what the issue was there and what was going on is while we were playing around in the compass rose in its configure menu under ambience I had selected this playlist so not only did we have our sounds that we put on here but we also had a general scene back sound, background sound so we actually had it playing twice um, <laughs> that's not great is it so I've removed the one you just saw and removed the one from the scene so that's now gone now we've just got this one that's actually in here um, which hopefully will give us a much better volume um, and again we can just check that by selecting our character here and that sounds like a much uh, more appropriate a much more appropriate level of sound I can hear the gulls and the birds and I can also hear the waves but hopefully that's not too intrusive now so I think that was quite important that we did that um, it's going to be a little bit too much in the face now obviously I could have taken the one off of the map um, and just adjusted the volume on the scene um, but uh, I chose to do it this way it's a bit easier on the fly to make adjustments if it's already on the map um, you know if players say oh it's too loud I can just instantly go in here and turn that down a bit so I've turned it down to 0.3 okay what are we going to do today so what I want to do today is look at our very first add-on yes I know um, we've talked about the fact that we're not using add-ons at all uh, because we wanted to get the basics right and ready well we have uh, the basics are here so the first one I want to look at what I'm going to look at in this video is an add-on called tokenizer um, so there's a number of videos out there you may have already come across it but we're gonna have a little play with that um, because it's going to enable us to fix a couple of the which to me are I find them slightly annoying so first of all I'm going to go over to my game settings on the top right here and I can go to manage modules uh, what I probably should do before I do that if I uh, return to setup let's show you how to get these modules so at the top here I've got a games world that I'm on, game systems, if you remember first video we added that. If I go to add on modules, I've got a whole bunch that I've already downloaded and had a little bit of a play with. They're not installed on our game, they're just installed for Foundry. So none of these are active in our game at the moment, you'll see that in a moment. If I go to install module, this is where I can search for the various ones I want. Now I'm not sure if it will bring up tokenizer because there's lots of different versions of different things in here. There are hundreds of add-ons for this. I have already downloaded tokenizer, it's down here um, in the bottom right. So that's already downloaded for me, I don't need to do it. But just install module, search for what you want, um, click install, it will update it. Once we've done that, I can go back into my campaign. So back into Stormwreck Isle here and top right go to my settings and I can go to manage modules and as you can see these are all the modules that I have installed but none of them are active at the moment so the one we're going to look at is tokenizer I'm just going to left click next to that save module settings now you'll see straight away it will say hang on a minute I need to reload so it's going to reload to bring that module in now if I go to my configure settings um, what we can see is the standard core ones here, the 5th edition D&D system, but also tokenizer. So this is where we potentially can change a few things, default colors and things like that, that we can have a little play with and change those if we want to. I'm not going to do that right now because actually the defaults work fine for me from what I've seen. Uh, if we need to, we'll come and have a little play with it later. All right, so how does tokenizer work? Well, first of all, I want to go to my actors. Um, and we've got a few things here. So we've got uh, under our players, we've got our test person. I'm just going to drop Randall into our 
uh, into our players here. So we've got Randall and we've got our test. We've got all of these NPCs, some of which have got horrible backgrounds on the myconoids uh, and our actual monsters. Any of these we can choose to tokenize. So let's start off with, uh, just minimize that to clear up space a little bit. Let's start with Randall, our player character. Here he is. So this is currently what his token looks like. Just zoom right in there so you can see that. Uh, it's just a top down view. Um, I'll tell you what I'm also going to do, just in case that is too loud, I'm going to just turn off those bits of sound here. So we've got this top down view, it's exactly the same as his picture for his, uh, for his actor there. Now we've got this installed, if I right click you can see there is an option down here for tokenizer. And this brings up a new screen that enables us to add some more details. Now this has come up with the default. Um, of what it wants to do and as you can see this is our normal on the left here this is our normal picture that we've got and on the right is what it's suggesting our token will look like so there's several layers here we can see on the right hand side we've got our uh, our base layer which uh, sorry our our token ring layer which is giving us this gray ring around the outside. We've got our actual image, which is taken directly from this left panel. And then we've got this white giving us this white background. So there's all sorts of different things I can do here. So first of all, I can delete that white background. Can you see that's now got rid of that white? I can delete that circle and I'm left pretty much with what we started with. So I can do those things. I'm not gonna apply, I'm gonna come out of there. Oh, don't uh, go back to tokenizer. Okay, um, now am I happy with this token? Lots of things I could do. I'm going to move this picture and just make it a little bit more central here. So if I, I, can, if I click modify up here, it enables me to edit this picture. It's currently locked, this layer is locked, so you can have multiple layers as part of the avatar and then multiple layers as part of the token. I'm happy with just the one layer for the avatar, but it is currently locked at the moment. You can see this little padlock. If I unlock this, I can now move this around. So I want to move it slightly more centrally um, because I've got a lot of white space here and I'm missing his cloak off there. I just want, I'd rather his helmet be pretty much in the middle. Um, how do I get this image over there? Well, down here, just down the bottom here where it's got next to, it's got add frame, it's got all sorts of upload and things like that. I've got this to use avatar image. That means it's going to pull this image from avatar and slap it on top and that's important it slapped it on top of everything else uh, so it looks horrible right now we've got the one underneath still uh, we're over the top of the ring and you might be happy with that that might be that you you want it just overlapping that that ring a bit in fact we'll make one like that first but I do want to get rid of this other copy of him below so this is the layer here and I can just bin that and now that's our token so if I apply this it does not update what's on our game board. It only updates what the token will be when I drag it on. So if I drag that on now, um, let's get rid of those. Let's get rid of the bars. Uh, duh, 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 never displayed. Just get rid of those. That's now the token we've got for for this individual. So he's got that white background um, and his token slightly overflows the ring. So that might be a look that you're going for. We'll leave him on there for the moment. Let's make another change. So we go back into tokenizer. I might want to get rid of that white background. It's, see, look, it's added, it did this before. It's added another layer um, to this because it's using that image as a with that extra ring. So I'm just gonna get rid of that and bring him back in. I'm gonna get rid of that white background. Okay, and then I'm gonna apply and we can just drag another version out. So you can see that wherever he stands, we can now see through that token behind him. So we might be happy with that. Okay, so again, because resources is changing, I'm changing this at the token level, not at, uh, not at this level. Um, that's why it keeps bringing the resources back in. Okay, so that's another option we've got. Let's go back into tokenizer. What else can we do? I'm gonna modify and unlock this one. Uh, now, how can I make this slight? Okay, so just by using the mouse wheel, I can make him slightly bigger or slightly smaller. So I've made him slightly smaller. I'm now going to bring him across. Uh, get rid of that slight, get rid of that old version. 
Okay, so he's not taking up quite so much room here. But let's say I want to change the, the color of that ring. This is a player character. I want them to stand out. I can click Add Frame. So just down here, Add Frame, and look at the options. There's loads of them already in here. Now, the only shame is, is that the, by default, they're all circular. So if you want square ones, you might need to um, find your own ones. Note there was a place where you could upload. We'll just have a look at that in a moment. But we can choose the token that we want for our, in this instance, our player characters. Um, let's say that we want to go, let's go with this one just so it really stands out. So we can see this is now what our token will look like. Get rid of the layer behind it, the other token. Um, and this is currently our image. So we can click apply. We can drag him out. That's currently our image. Let's get rid of the resources again. So we might decide that that's what we want. Personally, I'm not a fan of that. I don't like it myself. I much prefer these two, um, but I do prefer a smaller icon. And in fact, I'm going to change it to the way that I prefer. But I just wanted to show you there's lots of different ways that you can do that. Now, under the add frame, I think there was a look upload from your computer, and I think that's to upload um, different frames and things. Uh, under add frame, there is, ah, look here, select another file right at the very top. So it looks like you should be able to upload your own PNG file um, and then put your own, your own token in there if you want to. So I am going to get rid of that that we did. I'm going to modify this and make him a little bit smaller. Oh, I've got to unlock it first, make him a little bit smaller. I'm going to move him a little bit more centrally, uh, and then I'm going to dump him in there. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, I am going to, for my player characters, I might change them and uh, make them this, this still grey one. Get rid of the one I don't want, um, and then I'm left with this as my token. Now, as you can see, the token ring is top of the list followed by the picture, followed by the white background. So I can change the order of these, just using these up and down arrows if I want to. That now puts my token over the top of the ring. Obviously, if I put the white at the very top, <laughs> it covers everything and our token disappears. Certainly don't want that. Um, but I'm going to bring that back. So I've got a choice. I can either have it like that where it's chopping off his sword and things um, or if I wanted to I can have it like this where he's only overlapping it a bit. I quite like that. So I'm going to use this ring for all of my player characters. So let's do that. Drag him in uh, and that is what I'm going to be using. So I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to get rid of that one. Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to leave the, I can turn the resources off for him just so we can see it slightly better. We don't need that. Uh, so that's, that's our first one done. So you can see once you've kind of had a little play and you know how to do it, it's really, really easy to do. Now let's do it with our, our test one here. Again, right click into tokenizer. That immediately is what it wants this token to look like. We can change as we did before all of those other things. Hey, look, I'm happy with this. I default's fine. Drag that in. That's now our token. Get rid of the old one. Now remember, the token is only a representation of the character, of the actor that is in our list. So anytime I drag this out, it's bringing in the properties from up here from the character. So if we are, you know, even though we're changing tokens, we're deleting one, dragging another one out. It's all pulling the base stats and everything from the character. All right. So happy with that. It's done. Now I could do, uh, I could potentially try to update the token from here. The problem with that is that's not going to update our base creature. Okay, so for this harpy, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to tokenizer, and it's defaulted because it's got this as a monster, it's defaulted to give this a different ring around it. Now I might decide because this is a flying creature, I want to give it a different ring. If we look at frames, uh, I might say, oh, I want to give it a blue one to show that it can fly um, or something like that if I wanted to. I absolutely could do that. Let's just have, for example, have a look at that one. I could use that one to show that this creature can fly. Is that necessary? Absolutely not. It's entirely up to you. I would suggest, although it is only a suggestion, obviously, that you kind of pick a theme. Characters are all kind of in one way. 
NPCs or neutral creatures that could go one way or the other are different and monsters are clearly labelled. Just makes it slightly easier to see. So I'm going to apply that and I'm going to chuck this harpy out here, delete the old harpy. We now have a new harpy with a new icon. How easy is this? Okay, let's do it with zombies. We're just going to go through. Uh, I'm happy with... I, mm, see, this is the default token picture. I have used this picture. So I want to use my version, not their version. So I'm going to modify this and unlock this layer so I can move him down. Okay, then I want to uh, use that image, which actually isn't quite as big as I want. So I'm going to make over here, I'm going to make him larger, bring him down a bit, add him over. Am I happy with that? Yeah, I might be happy with that. I want to get rid of the background one because that's not what we want. And that's now my zombie. He is bleeding over the edge here. So I can either move him up. In fact, actually, I can resize him here. I can either move him up or, or whatever I wish to do. So I'm quite happy with that, but I want that ring just chopping off the bottom of his legs. There we go. So I'm happy with that for him. That's my zombie token, token now. So I can get rid of this one and this one. Drag my new zombies out. There we go. Now, of course, I could get rid of the white so you can see through them, but I think um, it makes it a bit easier to see what the creature is. Now, players won't be able to hover over, but it makes it be easier to see what they are if I've got that white background rather than the, you know, the browns and greys disappearing into the browns and greys of the background or whatever it may be. Okay. Um, so this is going to be my default for player things. I know I did brand all slightly different. This is going to be my default for monsters. So who else have we got here that we need to update? We've got another zombie down here. We can just delete that one, drag that straight in. We've already done that token. We've got our ghoul. Let's do our ghoul tokenizer. Am I happy with that? No, I bought in a different image that I wanted to use. So I'm going to delete my, that ghoul image. I'm going to bring this one over. And actually now I've realized I can just move it over here. That's going to be much easier. And I can bring that up and look, that fits nicely using my image that I prefer into that token. Click apply. I'm going to delete this old ghoul and I'm going to slap out this new ghoul. Now, one thing to bear in mind is this ghoul was hidden. Um, I've put a new token down by default. It's not hidden. So I just need to tick that. And there we go. So he's now hidden and there was nothing down there. So that quickly, we've just been through our characters and our monsters and just updated their tokens. So this shouldn't take too long at all. Uh, Clifftop Observatory. Okay, so let's do this one. Uh, now again, we don't need to do these two because we already did them. We can chuck Randall out and he's bringing in his new surroundings and the same with our test as well. Now we've got two different types of kobolds here. So let's try and make sure that we've... Uh, uh, we, we're covering both of those. So we've got our winged kobolds. So if we go to tokenizer, uh, we didn't find a different image for these. So we're going to use that one. Um, or did I? Did I find a new image? Uh, let's have a look. If I go to upload, uh, oh, I need to modify this first and then go to upload. Um, did I find, yeah, I see, I did find a winged kobold that we can use. Let's pick this one. Okay. Um, and then we get rid of the one behind it. Let's get rid of that one. We are going to use avatar image. We're going to put it behind and then we can move this around, zoom it in, or whatever we want to do. Um, now again, of course, we can choose to put that because it's ah, right because it's got a white background. If we put it above the um, above the the, uh, the token circle, it will block it all out. If it was a PNG file, which doesn't have the white background, we would be able to have it so the wings uh, stuck over. But I'm perfectly happy with that. I don't need to do uh, wings all over the place. Uh, yeah, that's good. Apply. Okay, so I can now get rid of that one and that one, which means I can now stick my winged kobold and look how much nicer that looks compared to um, like these ones down here. Okay, so that was kobold min. So we're going to get rid of you, stick you out. Uh, let's update this and just remind us that this was, we're only updating the name of the token so that we know which is which. Um, it makes no difference to the actual game. So this is mech. Again, I'm just going to edit this one 
so that as the DM I can keep track of which one is which as they move around um, Mech and Min because they are different. Okay, that was easy. Um, lovely jubbly. So let's do our normal kobolds now. Tokenizer again. Uh, and that's what it's going to default to. I might move... Uh, It doesn't want me to move him down, which is interesting. Okay. Uh, but see, this is a PNG file. If I put him on top, you can see his claws just about uh, hover over the top. Oh, I need to unlock this if I want to move it. So, you know, I could have it like that if I wanted to. I mean, it would be rubbish, but I could. I'd much rather have him just about within the frame. Maybe his horns and his claws over the edge but I'd rather keep it clean around the edge so I'm going to do that I'm going to whack apply I'm happy with that cobalt one two and three we can get rid of and we can dump cobalt one two and three back in there we go so that makes those tokens much nicer to use and move around with all right not much else left to do on here we need to do sturges um, so again let's right click tokenizer it's, uh, I hate this picture. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, let's get rid of that. Let's bring in this version of it, um, which I think is a bit nicer. And again, we can alter the size. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to stick it like that just so it's slightly smaller. Um, I think that's about right. I don't, I quite like this. The fact as it's a PNG, it slightly bleeds over. If I try and fit it all in, um, I don't think it makes much difference so we're going to do that okay so i've got one two three four let's do those four first oh make sure they're not on him uh one two three four my placement is rubbish and then one two three four here as well so again we dump that over there dump that over there dump that over there and dump that over there Okay, now we can move them to where we want them. Alright, move that one over there. Okay, the Sturge is done. Easy peasy. You can see how much nicer it is. There's some consistency over tokens. It makes it a bit more obvious that they are there. Um, if they're not hidden, in other words, if the token creature isn't hiding, we want the players to at least be able to see them uh, you know, a bit clearer. So the only other thing we've got left on here is the Dragon Wormling. So uh, let's right click on our dragon, go to tokenizer, and of course we've got this other image here rather than this one. So let's get rid of the default one there, bring in this one which is huge and it's on top of everything else. So we take that down a layer, uh, we can move him and make it a bit smaller so he kind of fits in. Now because this isn't a PNG, he will just cover it like that which is ugly. Oops, a daisy. So we don't want to be doing that. So we want that on top and then that underneath. Okay, so I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to get rid of you. I'm going to drag you in. And you'll notice that that is a big token because it's a big creature. Now you can double right click. <laughs> uh, you can change the size of these appearance. So the scale of it. Now this is supposed to be a wormling. So I can bring that down and just say it's scale two, which is going to make that for this space where he's actually chilling out and everything. Um, let me select him. Oh, doesn't want me to select him. Why not? What have I done? <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? I can double click him. I just can't. Uh, oh, yeah, I, can, I can. Oh, I see. It's because there's this, it's got the square token underneath. Okay, that's probably not quite what I want then. But you can see that you can change the scale if you want to. Um, I see what it's doing here. Maybe I want the scale to be one, but I want to say, actually, I want to scale it by the grid dimensions rather than scale the token. There we go. So that would represent a large creature. So I think that's, that's a better way of doing it. Um, and that means he should be constrained by anything like walls. So I'm going to leave him there. That's fine. Okay. So, Compass Rose done. Clifftop Observatory done. Um, Seagrow Caves is next. Let's go and do that. And this is where we had some quite annoying uh, myconoids. Um, and we've also got our little friendly, not so friendly uh, octopus down here. Now, just again, just to make sure 
not causing problems for you guys in the video being able to hear that. Whoops, a daisy, I don't want to do that. Um, we'll just turn off the sea sound. So here's our little octopus, uh, our spore servant octopus. Again, we can just go to tokenizer and we can slap that in. If I unlock that, I can make him a bit bigger. Kind of fits in. Happy with that. Delete the original. Chuck him over here. But I want to make sure he's hidden. Uh, we can get rid of our test. We can put, pop her back out in a proper token. We've got a couple of Sturges here. So again, because the token's already done, I can just drag them out nice and easy. No drama at all. Um, so we've only got a few creatures to do. Let's do these Sturges. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Did I put them on top of each other? Yes, I did. Four, five, and six. We can hit. We can hear our drippy um, water there as well. Okay, so we've got our sturges, uh, and then pretty much we're down to doing the new ones here. So these are our myconoids. Um, we put them under NPCs, didn't we? Here we go. So uh, these are the sprouts. So again, right click, tokenizer. Am I happy with that? Might just shift him over a little bit. Um, yep, I'm happy with that. Let's go. So your Kraz. Here we go, better token. There we go, just so we know he's a sprout. Let's turn those off. Must remember to turn back on before we start playing. And this one is Mullen. So we're just going to drag that out. Double right click. Mullen. Brilliant. Easy peasy, huh? It's really not difficult. This tokenizer just makes a lot of difference, makes these things much nicer. So we've got the adult sort of um, hipses and things. So again, right click, tokenizer. Uh, unlock that just to move it slightly into the middle. Happy with that. Brilliant. Rug Oso. Chuck you in. Double right click. Rug Oso. I believe that was correct. Job done. And this is Hipsis. Hip Sis, I think it was, wasn't it? Close enough. I'm sure you'll scream at me if I've got that wrong. Uh, these ones didn't have individual names. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember the idea is that these are neutral and if the players, unless the players do something silly, they shouldn't be getting into a fight here. <laughs> but if they do, they've got six of them just in that chamber to deal with. Now again, we've got a couple over here that we need to drop in. One, two. Uh, and then we've got Cizena, who is our leader here. So we can, again, just make some slight changes until we're happy with that. So she is Sin, or Sin Ensa. Uh, drop her in. Oh, yeah, because I named, oh, right, because it's brought across and I named that as a separate creature. It's already brought the name in. There we go. So we can bring that across. Now, I believe at this time, actually, we could do with saying that she is unconscious. See, you can just apply that. Suddenly that creature's unconscious. Nice and easy. All right. Only a few left to do on this one then. So we've got our fume drakes. Now, you might argue that fume drakes being part of the cloud and the gases and things like that, leaving their tokens exactly like that uh, is kind of useful because they do blend in. Even when they're not hidden, they look like they're part of the uh, part of the background. So we, we may well do that. Go back to my monsters folder at the top here. Let's tokenize and see what we can do. So what if we got rid of the frame? Um, we unlock that we can make that a bit bigger see it's got this bluey background but i'm not sure that's kind of what we want um that's just going to be what we've already got that makes no difference at all by doing that so let's add a frame but let's see if there's a different frame we might want to use potentially uh what about what about a clear one like this um uh, So we could potentially, let's just, let's give it a go. 
we can change it doesn't matter what about that so it's got a clear one which makes it look more like hopefully we should be able to see it because um, we don't want the, the DM to not be able to see it but I think that might be a little bit nicer so yep yeah, that's a fume drake no drama uh, and if you remember I said about changing these to say um, things like always for owner so for me as the DM as the owner of those creatures it makes it much easier uh, put resources not for everyone just for me and yes it does the thing where it says it's going to do it and then doesn't just go in and updates it there we go so it makes it easier for me to see it but the players it's going to be uh, it's not going to have that big board around so I'm quite happy with that yeah it's a bit of variety something slightly different and of course I could just left them as the square ones that blended in quite nicely anyway uh, and over here we've got the fire snake so just looking what size the fire snake it is medium so we know we're going to be doing that as the same size go to our tokenizer Ugh, don't want that get rid of that beastie and bring over our fire snake now do we want this bleeding over all over the edge it's a png so we could but even if we're going to do that it's certainly too large so we could perhaps do it like that okay so it's bleeding over that ring that edge bit slightly um, which adds a bit of character to it uh, we need to hide this one though because they can't see that when they first arrive in fact actually we need to make sure we hide these two so they can't see them before they become a problem. Those fume drakes only attack once the characters get into this area. I'm, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to shift that because I just realized that they're going to be combat around here and that's going to be in the way. So I move that right now. So I don't have to do it when the game's running. Okay, have we missed anybody? We've got fume drakes. Uh, we've got our, whoops, our dragony thing. We've missed these three down here. Um, so these are NPCs. These are our sprouts, aren't they? So this one is Bispo. Lovely jubbly. Uh, this one is Valop. Uh, blimey, can't find my token. Stupid boy. So we drop both of those in. That was Valop. And this one is Popple. Get rid of that old token. Drop Popple in there. Okay, I think we've got everybody. How quick was that? Violet Fungus. Right, so again, Violet Fungus over here. Right click, token. Are we happy with that? Is this happen to be a PNG? We get rid of the background. I'm thinking as Violet Fungus, I might do that. Um, make it slightly bigger. I mean, I could choose to get rid of the token completely and just have the image that's sitting there. Um, that would be fine, I think, for a plant. But as it's a monstrous plant, I want to actually pop it out properly. There we go. Uh, and again, these are going to be invisible. In fact, actually, I think I'm going to pop... Whoops, the daisy. I'm going to pop this last violet fungus... Um, over here near these ones as well not near the stairs that's a bit too obvious I'm going to move this one in I'm going to have them all clustered together okay so there's going to be a patch of them uh, which makes much more sense from a you know um, from a planty type of view right done so compass rose uh, we've got nothing to do on the storm wreck aisle so that last one we've got to do is dragon's rest and actually some of these are already done for us so we can get rid of our two uh, characters there we can drop Randall back out in his thing we can pop our test lady back in hers um, we haven't done this chap so just shrink that up so we can see it better this is Tarak we can go to tokenizer what a handsome chappy Tarak is just move it down slightly oh, don't want to bleed over that'll do okay get rid of Tarak drag Tarak back out much nicer okay now we've got some I know I named them all before which is slightly annoying now um, <laughs> having to go back and rename them um, but I can come and stick all these out so this is Frub I want to do that I want to rename the token 
There you go. Your frub. Your blep. Whoops. Get it correct. There we go. You're out there. Who we got over here? Uh, oh, yes. Laylee, of course. Move you out the way, Laylee. Drop another one in here. Laylee. Whoops. A daisy. Misty L. How did I do that? Uh, Laylee. I think that was correct. Yes, it was. Get rid of you. Uh, and this is Myla. And she's a winged kobold. So let's stick our winged one out here. Uh, Lila. I can't type. What's that? Uh, Myla. Idiot. M Y L A. Myla. There we go. Get rid of that one. Um, now this is one of the other ones that we didn't um, that we changed the token specifically on this one for Killnip. Okay, so we could obviously go through and use our diversity on our tokens. I can't be bothered right now, to be honest. Mumpo. Um, we got Aga. Let's drag two more out here. So you are, whoops, double right click to get this up. You are Aga and you are Zuck. Brilliant, that's good. And then we've only got the ones up here. Uh, Rix, um, which is a normal kobold. I'm going to slap you out here, get rid of you. You are Rix, which is fine. Uh, and then we've got, got these two. Now, actually, uh, this is the same picture that I was using for our test person, wasn't it? Um, and I've got Varnoth here, this lady. So let's do her first. Um, right click, tokenizer. Uh, might move her down slightly if I can. Yep, don't want to reveal that white. That'll do. And she's got that nice dark background for no reason other than it just does. Uh, and then, so this is, um, we don't have, oh, remember she was, she was this adult bronze dragon. Okay. So what I want to do is to, I'm going to rename this what was her name Ranara now the reason I'm doing that is so I don't accidentally get confused uh, between our different characters so if I update I did want to tokenize um, okay didn't realize it would do that just double clicking on the image will automatically tokenize that's quite useful um, because we already had this image we'd put as the token, it's bringing that through for us automatically rather than the gold dragon one. So I'm quite happy with that. Close that. Get rid of that. And in theory, when I drop this one, yeah, so <laughs> it's given us the token, but it's given us the size of the original creature. So double right click, appearance, scale, we want to be normal scale and we want it to be five foot by five foot so if we do all that she shrinks down to our human size rather than her, <laughs> her dragon size which was obviously quite ridiculous okie dokie right they're all done and they look much nicer and of course because they've all been tokenized now any of those when i drop them onto any adventure map i add extras in or anything like that um, they're just going to automatically uh, update themselves and give us the the new token, uh, which is brilliant. So that's it. That's our very first add-on that we're going to use, Tokenizer. That's what it does. Really easy to use, but it does give a lot more consistency and a lot more flavour over some of these. You know, just looking at the caves and things, it makes them much nicer. The square blocks that we had for these guys was really ugly. I know they've still got white background, but at least they are all kind of matched. They fit within their um, allocated squares and things like that much nicer. So I think that's a huge improvement. Tokenizer, it's only aesthetics, but I think makes a big difference to, um, to the whole view and things like that. Um, 
tell me what you think. Do you like it? Is that something you're going to use? Uh, drop a comment, leave a like uh, and subscribe obviously for more and I will see you in the next video. Take care now.